He still my burn. Allison Sosa. <laughs> yeah. All right, look. <laughs> Boom. Allison outfit is in. Uh, during Allison's meeting, she gets called out to Steph Kid. Okay. Oh yeah. You know what I think is interesting? I don't, I don't know if we have time for this, but the in the first episode they say Kamala Harris full name. Yeah. Her full name. And I was like, damn. They even show a picture of her to say, yeah, she's gonna come on the show, and then make up an excuse. That's why she can't be on the show. Says so like, yeah. no, this show is underneath them, which I thought was a weird political statement. I'm like, y'all are using a real person's first and last, and yeah. and a political reasoning for a fake show. I don't know what that's about. In the second episode, when we're talking to the execs, the executive says, yeah, we're our writer Drew. He's written for uh, Seth, Sarah, and all the Jimmies, and I'm like, Seth Rogen, like. Sarah Silverman, like, yeah. you know, Jimmy Fallon, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Jimmys, yeah. you know, Jimmy, yeah. what's his name, the other one? But, you know, I'm like, why why, why do we get these fake names for them? Or, like, not these, these you know, short names. Yeah. And then, later on, they talk about, um, who is it? Lena Waithe. They le use Lena Waithe's whole name. It's like, Lena Waithe wants to get on the show. And I'm like, are they talking to these people or what? Like, right. Do they have permission to be on the show? Do they have permission to use these black women? Because they definitely act like they can't say these white people's names. And I don't know yeah. what the fuck that was about. Yeah. Um. Okay, so Alice leaves to go take care of the kid. Shane has to help her. It's clear Alice has no idea what she's doing. Um. Kid pukes in the crop. Uh crop pot uh which was disgusting you i think you said while we were watching why don't they go to the bathroom that was the weirdest you, thing ever that was weird that was um and they like force him to throw up on the living room floor, floor yeah it didn't make sense um alice keeps repeating everything shane says that was she funny really doesn't know how to talk to kids it was cute how they did that shane is like showing her the ropes because she had shay for all of a few months years ago um so i don't know if shane has been with women who have kids and she's and picked up some new tricks or if she was just completely in Shay mode, which was her little brother who she found out about and then his parents dropped him off and then she took care of him for a while. She got into this relationship. She was going to marry this woman. Parents came, showed up, took Shay back. Shay got super depressed and then Shane dropped the relationship with this woman. That was in the last series. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for the recap. Yeah. I actually <laughs> totally forgot about Shay. Nice. <laughs> nice she was a cutie yeah i remember now and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for bringing that back um and then uh shane mentions kiara and did she want to have kids and how does she not convince you to have them and shane is you know being like moody and standoffish and doesn't want to talk about kiara which lets us know that obviously she's not over it and we don't quite know what they were trying to de deliver but eventually we find out Find out it's some divorce papers. Which we already know. And that is the catalyst for Finley and Shane to go out drinking. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I do want to say there was a moment in the office um, when Danny has quit her dad's job and now she's talking to Bet. And Bet does some like slight grooming of Danny in mm -hmm. terms of like, you know, let's check out this art. And this was given to me by someone who really inspires me and you know a woman with vision that's how she gets all the hoes a woman who's you know handling her business and you're kind of that thing so i thought that was an interesting little dynamic because i'm like are they gonna start fucking but then i was like maybe not you know i think they are but i don't know it was kind of one of those things like mm, that would be kind of hot i don't know they're both grown but mm -hmm. we'll see yeah also we kind of skipped over when danny talked to her dad and about quitting the job and he's pretty much like well pack your things and leave i'll have somebody help you carry your stuff out like he's completely pissed off and then she thinks it's also a great moment to say i'm also engaged and um, that was hilarious yeah he says uh that's a lot of news for one morning get your shit which yeah he just holds the shit out of her get your shit i'm done is there a good time to tell people you're good? Not. why is telling good news for <laughs> Queer people always like possibly bad news for everybody. Terrible, else. devastating news. <laughs> Just, it's so spit messed up. that, spit that, because that was definitely the worst day of his life. Yeah, at least how he—that's how he was acting, like a baby. Um, yeah, he definitely made this about him and yeah. all that good stuff. Well, all that bad stuff, I guess. Um, and then okay, Shane and uh, Finley are at the bar. Oh wait, no, we I missed the date. You. Yes, Micah and Jose go out on a date. And Micah has a secret 
that he wants to share with Jose. And Jose's like, I already know, I saw your grinder profile, you're trans, it's cool. And Micah's like, actually, I use coupons at fancy restaurants. And uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. That was cute. Mm. Um, that was an interesting, well, go ahead, go ahead, what were you gonna say? I thought it was a cute dynamic um, of them being on a date. I also thought it was really real. I've definitely wondered, can I use Groupon on this first date, you know? I'm still buying you dinner. Is it that bad? And you know, he's just worried about like, am I gonna come off as a cheap ass? And Jose is just like, this must be about your entire identity. <laughs> Jose is like a definite cheap ass though, we kind of find out. Cause oh, yeah. he does something like, how about we don't pay a dime for this meal? We <laughs> we're just- We're not even gonna tip her in real cash. Yeah, we're not gonna tip this person <laughs> real money. Um, and then there, yeah, I think I'm, I'm interested to see how the relationship plays out because there is some sort of, hierarchical thing happening between Jose and Micah in a way because Micah comments on Jose's pronunciation mm -hmm. of something and, yeah something uh, on the menu um, I was like oh that's gonna be a thing yeah. because Micah's obviously concerned with how they're perceived in terms in, in wealth and power and things like and visual yeah things, which yeah comes visuals up optics are really um, important to micah and they already have this like micah is the tenant jose is the building manager responsible for really clean i mean micah comes in episode one breaks jose's window jose is the one responsible for really fixing it yeah um so they start kind of with that dynamic of i I'm the person who is in power. I come mess things up. You clean it up. You're yeah. the cleanup crew. And but I still want to date you. Yeah. We'll see how that turns yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Then we go to. Oh, we meet. We're back in the bar. Yeah. We meet. Um, Tess. Tess, if y'all remember from Sensei was like one of the eight that was super cool on the Netflix show, super gay, gay show to ever be on Netflix. Nice. Only less than two seasons. Nice. Mostly montages of porn. Well, it was like mostly orgies while people were at oh. parties. I didn't watch since eight, so I have. You will now. Okay. <laughs> All right. <there's> that. <laughs> um, but so we're in the bar. Um, Finley is going around trying to hit on everybody drunk yeah she's getting wasted super wasted and doesn't work out but some stuff goes down where this drunk guy goes trying to convince tess to pour him some more drinks tess is like no you've had enough and then he starts getting aggressive with her and then shane comes in with all those no no, no it wasn't tess it was bartender boo tess's girlfriend Tess and her oh, girlfriend are in a poly up. relationship. I have their names mixed yeah, up. Tess is the waitress, the woman who played on Sense 8. The bartender bro is the girl with the curly long hair. And he kind of gets aggressive with her. The bartender? Yeah. And the bartender is not named Tess. No. Okay, sorry. Oops. Yes. Bartender boo. Mm -hmm. The drunk guy gets aggressive with bartender boo. Shane comes in and... Dun, no. da 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 throws him on the other side of the room and this, saves the day. Yeah, and this is when everybody is like <gasps> liking bartender boo. Um because she gets super smitten. She's like, "Oh, you're just so strong." Just, yeah, and completely just goes damsel in distress and I'm thotty for you now and you know, like the fact that they kind of revealed that they are in an open relationship is already like she's just she was already eyeing Shane. Yeah, big time. To begin with, Tess had already bigged up Shane as being like a legend in the community, and there need to be more people like us. Which lets me know she's like, I'm Queen Thought right now, um, but you're you're the original Queen. Yeah. Of body. Yeah. Um, and then then Shane goes one step farther and is like how about some lesbians some lesbians should buy this bar back because apparently it used to be an old queer bar and shane says you know i think that should happen i don't know and then that's when you know bar boo is like oh my god yes jesus heard my prayer yes <laughs> and is blessing me right now with a shame mm -hmm. to beat up the hoes and save the lesbian hood yes 
I really like that they brought this issue up of lesbian bars closing. Um, that's really a passion of mine is talking about the loss of that space. But also it was a nice juxtaposition to the last season of The L Word where they had um, The Planet and they had She Bar, which was like the warring lesbian bar that would open up right across the street. And they actually had to fight over turf of who was going to come to their bars and what nights were they going to host things. And there were so many spaces for queer people in LA. And now to today's The L Word Generation Q, which is really on point with what's happening in reality, there are no gay bars at all. So if they actually turned this bar back into a lesbian bar, it would be the only one in the city. Which is just like, ouch. There are no lesbian bars in LA. There are hardly any in this country. There are very few. That just seems so extreme. Yeah. I don't know. There was like a big drop in lesbian owned bars. Is they would go out of business or another company will buy them up and the bar would shut down or they would turn it into an everybody bar and eventually would kind of be taken over by the straight crowd um so there's only a couple <laughs> handfuls of lesbian bars left in the united states i have my period. own like series of commentary on <laughs> what's up with lesbian bars but that maybe we won't talk about that another now. episode another that, episode. that should be <laughs> recap on tap <laughs> yeah. all right uh, yeah, so lesbian bars are closing and Shane suggests that maybe we should put this bar back in lesbian hands. So I think that's I gonna agree. happen. Um, then, uh, oh, Micah and Jose go swimming. That's right. They hit the pool. That's when we see Micah go ahead and put the moves on saying, mm -hmm. uh-uh, you can't touch this coochie butt. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, so Mike is like, you know, that I don't want to be touched right there. He takes I'm over. <laughs> We're all getting it together. It's Generation Q. We, Thank we you. catching up. Thank you. Okay, so um, Micah also reveals that he does not like to talk about his past because people start trying to clock him and try to see, you know, can they see the person that he was before he gets real self-conscious about it so he doesn't like to talk about it he doesn't even like he because after he talks about it he feels like everybody's looking at him trying to uncover whatever his past is mm -hmm. um and then the sexy get down happens which i was kind of a jump for me but maybe that's a leap it's that a he makes show. all the time yeah, yeah they don't yeah, have time this is to... something that they do honestly i always thought that was weird in the l word like how quickly we get to sex without any protection I think ever showtime must have a mandate like sex every 30 seconds oh yeah it has <laughs> it has to be because i'm like somebody got something in it i'm sorry um so then we go to uh danny coming home and finding sophie sleep on the couch she covers up with the blanket obviously danny super cares for sophie real cute and then we jump right into finley um, who is, starts hooking up with one of the women who, at the bar who actually accepted her corny suggestions. Come on, yeah, turn uh, on. So Finley finessed her way into getting a free drink out of this woman. Mm, mm, mm. So this woman really wanted to get laid. Um, so they're hooking up, and then Finley starts having some kind some of medical of attack. attack. Um, she's also super wasted. She says that things are spinning. She's got shortness of breath. Um, not really a good way to have a hookup. Yeah, it seemed time. like it wasn't going to work out so well, but I don't know. It comes back. It comes back around. Uh, Jordy shows up at Beth's office. Jordy is the boo of Angie, little Angelica, all grown up. And uh, Jordy puts it down on Beth. It's just like, I am so sorry. I should have never let Angie you know, cut class. My family has different values, which I guess means they are cool with her skipping school and smoking weed, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Bet is like, mm -hmm, whatever. Don't smoke weed with my daughter. Don't skip school with her anymore. Um, and Bet kind of, I think, knows she has to kind of let this thing happen if she wants to win any points back with Angie. Because mm -hmm. Angie is like, I'm going to do what I want. Angie said, fuck you, mom. Yeah. So, <laughs> At that point, <laughs> y'all need to reestablish some some respect. Um, Bet ends up at the LGBTQ center, yeah, and talks to um 
the community and we have this really beautiful moment where bet is you know really engaging with the community and danny comments on how moving that is uh pierce is like yeah oh you don't really know why bet's really running oh ah, okay okay well whatever we still don't find out no. but we know that bet is a great motivator and in the same conversation she uh impresses jordy and and Angie, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, hey, you know, it's pretty cool. See, yeah. you're asking my mom. It's pretty cool. Flashback to the story that Bet references, which is from season two of the original series. I'm pretty sure that was season one or season two. Bet's dad, this is when Bet wants to reveal to her dad that uh, Tina's having the baby and they are so much in love. And Bet's dad comes in and completely just blows Tina off as Bet's friend. And he doesn't know why she has to carry on with this. And when he dies, uh, later in that season or the next season, he um, still refers to Tina as her friend. Um, and that was like a big deal between Bette and her dad and Kit and Kit being more accepted for her relationship and Bette's relationship not being accepted, even though it's clear that the dad kind of favors Bette. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we see Bette. We see Ben in this beautiful light again. Mm -hmm. At least as a great, as a good politician. Yeah, it was a nice, honest moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was honest, but I, because it's scripted. The thing is, though, too, is that I always hate when politicians say like, "Yeah, politicians are full of shit," which she does say quote in mm -hmm. this like, and it's like you're a politician, Ben. Yeah, yeah, you are. A it's politician. like, and I like think they do that on purpose too. Yeah, like it's not an accident for Ben to say, "I am a piece of shit." Mm-hmm. Um, then we see Alice and Gigi and Eli in bed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Alice sees Gigi and Eli in bed. Gigi's um, like reading to Eli. It's real cute. Mama son moment. And Alice is jealous as hell. At least that's what it looks like to me. She's also sick because she's let this little kid get her fully sick. She has some kind of flu or whatever he had. Yeah. Um, and it's also nice because the last time that we've seen Gigi for this episode is Gigi being crazy, hammering the ring on the door. And right. now we see her in this like calm, tranquil state with her son being a caregiver, which is what Nat had foreshadowed to that Gigi is a good mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we skip that there was an argument between Alice and Nat about Nat calling in Gigi to take care of the kid and Alice saying, um, you know, you should count on me to be a help around here. Mm -hmm. And if you need to include me. But also, Gigi can definitely take care of him tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know how we skipped that. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but it ends up being where Gigi and Alice have a nice little moment. And they're able to kind of let their guard down between each other. And, um, you know, start to figure out, okay, we're, how are we going to co-parent our kids? And, you know, we mm -hmm. both have a respect and a love for Nat and how do we make that work? Yeah. So. And they share breakup stories, which is cute. Um, I think they're all going to end up sleeping together. My prediction. All right. Another day on the Yeah. Two in the morning. All right. So then we jump to, um, an engagement party with Sophie, uh, and Danny. Mm -hmm. And, um, they still not talking to each other, which was so weird. Oh, I'm yeah. like, okay, Danny. I mean, Sophie, God damn it. Okay, and Sophie's family had, like, hyped her up when they were in their pre-engagement thing. They're sitting around drinking together. She was with her mama and her sisters. And they're just like, what's wrong with you? Why are you in this mood? You should be happy thinking about your hair for the wedding. Sophie is just like, mm, no, I'm not really feeling stuff. And they're like, get over it. Worry about having this fun party. If things don't work out, you can just get divorced. Which kind of leaves Sophie soured. It was also a really weird comment. Um, yeah. 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 Um, but they're at the party and they are like, Danny, where's your dad? Oh, my dad's not here. That's okay. You're one of us now. And so they totally take her in. I think this is going to become a problem of Danny not being accepted by her family, but being completely accepted by Sophie's family and Sophie kind of being on the fence about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's totally going to come back yeah, around. Yeah, that's absolutely going to be a problem in the long run. Um, in the same conversation, Sophie's mom gives her a family heirloom and it's like i just know we're gonna bring this ring back up what what selfie wants to do with this ring it's gonna be an issue so she gonna give it to somebody else Ooh, <laughs> nice yep that's probably what's gonna happen that's probably what's gonna happen selfie please be shit don't be ancient 
<laughs> man, I don't know, man. I feel like Sophie is serving up like I got ain't shit in my veins, so Definitely. I might just have to live up to that a little bit. She might be Shane. Sophie might be our Shane. She might be Shane. And Sophie Shane, you hear it? Mm-hmm. Sophie Shane. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, then where do we end up? We end up next. Um. Oh. Finley gets a text from the would-be hookup that was supposed to happen the night before, Rebecca. but Finley like gets sick or whatever. So Rebecca hits a Finley, and they come back together, and it's like, okay, let's make this happen. They're getting down. Finley is only a little bit drunk. She quotes as not dizzy drunk. So ready to fuck. And Micah is just like, you really need to stop. This is the last drink. Micah delivers a beautiful poem afterwards Very at nice. this uh, at the engagement party. That's the toast. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, it's about love and like growing in love and like love over time and yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. It's cute. It's a, and then they do like a little montage of everybody with somebody, um, and it's kind of like the montage comes back to Sophie and Danny, and they like whisper to each other, and their song plays, and they're like huggy, and it's cute, and it's back together. And also realize how tall Danny is. Yeah, Danny's pretty big. Yeah. Um, and then oh, the best, the final scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all been waiting for. Forever. First off, it was earlier in the episode when we when we intro when we're introduced. Two Felicity fine ass. Oh my is... god. And Bet is on the phone and just draw drop when Felicity walks past by the door. She's mid conversation. She just stopped talking, stopped listening. Everything slows down. I'm I'm like leaning in like, yes, Felicity. I love that Bet is fucking this chocolate woman. This older black woman. Not since the carpenter dog. You know, and you know it's great it's yes great. this yes. is also who she cheated on tina with mm. wait 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 yeah she reveals oh, that, that she was, that cheated oh, yeah, on yeah, yeah. tina and it is with felicity with felicity and felicity is obviously still with the shits yes because um, she says felicity sits down and says i missed you i missed you. and then they do a little hand yeah they do a little thing and then it's like, scene. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking over the city. It's super cute. Yeah. It's super cute. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens with Felicity and Bet. Yeah. That's probably going to be my new favorite couple to watch, which is maybe I'm nasty. I don't know. But, but maybe I'm normal. I'm interested in Maybe I'm nasty. gay. <laughs> maybe I'm just into this. <laughs> um, okay. What did you think? Episode as a whole. Episode two as a whole. Um, I still feel like there's a lot of building that has to happen. Um, that there, I'm, I'm still not fully into any character story at this okay. point. Uh, I, I mean, well, the I'm into Felicity. That's what I want to see. I want to see <laughs> what, what happens I with because I need Felicity to like cougar my life. You know what I mean? Like also, Angie does deserve two black moms. She'll I'll have three that. moms, and you know that's fine. I'll the two that. of them going to be black. I wonder how that's going to play out, too, and how they're going to work that into the story in terms of... Oh, Angie is going to be totally into Felicity until she realizes, like, you broke up my parents. She's going to be like, Felicity is my black woman hero. She is even cooler than my mom. And then she's going to be like, this is the <gasps> bitch that ruined everything. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Jordy is going to be cool with everybody because she just, like older people who doing their thing. I feel like Jordy's not going to be around for long. No, Jordy's definitely going to get kicked to the curb. Jordy's going to break Andy's heart on some dumb shit. Definitely. And... Definitely. She's also going to get her in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Because Angie is just like, mm, all I can think about is teen makeout session. Did they? They didn't make out. Did they, they didn't make out. Okay. Um, what else happened in this episode, though? Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I don't really... This is fun so far. I'm not totally irritated by the show. By the show, I've heard some like interesting um, things about like how much we're feeling this new season. Personally, I don't feel strongly to turn it off. Um, I feel like I uh, thanks for these characters. Thanks for you know yeah, just thanks for the diversity in the characters so far, and I want to see more of it. Um, yeah, thanks for the diversity in the characters. Okay. Um, this episode actually really reeled me in. I thought it was 
really fun. I like how they're showing the dynamics. First of all, I like that they showed the growth in the relationship from Gigi being crazy to Gigi really being a calm person who can have a normal conversation about parenting and relationship with her ex-partner's partner. I feel like that's something that actually happens in the community a lot is that you get to know your partner's exes and you maybe even build a friendship with them. Um, so I think that's really nice. Um, I'm interested to know more about Sophie and her family. Um, I like her as a character. I think she has a lot of layers and a lot of places they can go with her. Um, I'm, I'm really appreciative that Micah is not a shitty character. Um, and that I'm actually interested in his relationship. Um, I think that's going to be, um, a fun ride to go on with them. And I am all about figuring out what happens with Felicity and that. I want to know more and more and more if the next, if the rest of the season is just Felicity and Bet, I wouldn't be mad. If this show was called Felicity the L word, Bet. like Generation <laughs> Felicity and Bet, I'll be like, yes. I'd be like, what? Also, shout out to the L word always including multi generational intersecting storylines. Like from the young Angie all the way up until, I mean, Bet right now is like, kind of the matriarch character of the show like the oldest character on the show and they've always done that they always had Joyce the lawyer the divorce lawyer you know all the way back to um Shay being the young character um so it's nice just to see a show that really honors the multiple generations of queer relationships and queer people um that's great to see on tv I feel like it's not just 20 somethings doing hot shit yeah, you know, I think it's interesting, too, um, that the male characters in this, like, like, from the first, from the first season, like, I mean, from the first series, um, you, like, get into men characters, like, Jenny's boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know, like, all these other guys who are really part of that first core of people. I think it's cool that, you know, this that there are no, like, hetero guys who are part of our first core set of people. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, like, how do we build on these stories with Generation Q? Like, how do we really build on this this group? I think that's, that's cool. true. That is really cool. I do like how they're really focusing on people who are of the community. Yeah. Um, I have a question about um, Sophie and Danny's relationship and this idea that you should be discussing a new job with your partner before you accept it. And is that, should you be doing that? Um, uh, yes. Yes, I do think you should discuss a new job with your partner. Um, uh, because I feel like that's just regular talk. Like, before you would just m do that, don't y'all talk? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, did you think about, and, you know, if when you get a new job, wh whoever just like, I know what I'm going to do, that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just kidding. Nobody <laughs> does that, but I'm like, you, Danny's response, I mean, Sophie's response to it was like, we talk about stuff. So it seemed like there was some sort of breakdown in the communication. Yeah. Um, because so, she didn't come home that night and tell her. She came home and proposed. Yeah. yeah. And they revealed the next day that she had a job. I will say, though, that if if Danny were shopping for a new job, I would expect that would come up in their conversation. But Danny just kind of got offered a new job on the spot. And she was like, okay. And I'm like, I think that is okay. But I also think before you're like, commit your life to me, also my life has changed. Mm -hmm. that conversation should happen yeah it, you know it hit me though like there was a lack of trust in that situation which was like do you love her yeah you know and maybe i'm just reading into it a certain way or maybe we're supposed to read into it a certain way but um yeah it, it felt really possessive kind of unnaturally um, on whose part on sophie's part mm. on sophie's part i actually think maybe it's danny's part a little bit i mean i i kind of disagree with sophie i don't think danny had to discuss it but it i do see danny is like the exec at her company like she is top dog right up under her dad whereas sophie clearly is uh 
she's not a production assistant, but she um, she's part of the creative team, which is a little bit lower ranking. And so I wonder if Danny is just used to, I make power moves, I make decisions, I make them with no one else, where Sophie is just like, I'm a part of a team. I'm, I'm a I, team player. I want to know how they met. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, so far we have no idea how Danny and Sophie even came to be. And I think that would say a lot about their power dynamics yeah. in real life. Yeah. Because I think Danny can be really powerful in terms of the look of power. Um, Sophie clearly, if Sophie's getting proposed to, that tells me Sophie is the one who kind of decides what the what who's moves really it. moving yeah who's moving things mm -hmm. you know her permission was sought for this mm -hmm. but not for the job mm -hmm. and so maybe that's what's throwing her off is like oh all of a sudden you don't consult me and stuff i wonder i wonder what do you think about new generations picking up into this show like um and how they see it because personally i'm here for bet and bet and and Felicity maybe it's because also I am into like I don't know older black women is kind of hot to me you know? yeah. <laughs> like it's just kind of hot yeah. so uh I feel like I'm into it for that but I wonder if younger people are like not interested in that they don't care about uh Alice Shane and you know I mm. wonder how how uh, younger folks are reading these older people's characters and how older people are reading this new young generation of queers yeah. energy and all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a really good question. I actually wondered how younger people were even feeling about the dynamics of Sophie and Danny getting married, which to me seems like an anti-generation Q thing to do. Yeah, you know, but I do feel like family and traditions are really important in Sophie and Danny's life and so mm -hmm. it seems like you know family yeah families this is i don't think we've really met anyone else's we haven't met anyone else's family no we have met danny's family yeah we've true. met sophie's family mm -hmm. um so yeah i think those traditions are really ingrained yeah in them. Mm -hmm. yeah and her dad did seem like you gonna leave the family business yeah and then you gonna marry who yeah um, I don't know. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm more interested to just see what happens next. Um, mm -hmm. so far I'm not mad at the show. Nope. Um, I, um, uh, yeah, I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm not like in love, but I'm also not, I am, I'm like, I'm like in love because I'm like, I'm in love. You know what you I mean? You have I'm a like, crush. Yeah. You got a crush yeah. on the show. So I'm in, yeah, I have a crush <laughs> on the show. I have a crush on the show. I'm not ready to propose to the show, but I'm like, we are definitely dating. Yeah. We're dating. I'm going to text you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we finally got through, but this is like part four. Yes. But thank you for rocking with uh, Woman Crush every day. This every is our single day. first episode mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, on this. So yeah, we hope to see you next time. Yeah. Next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Oh, and let us know what you think about the show. If you yes. want to comment, please comment. If you want to ask some questions, please ask questions. Yeah. All right. Bye. Until next time.